is part of the American ethic to want to try to save others in distress. In the United States, the Air Force is charged with coordinating inland search and rescue efforts. We call on the Civil Air Patrol about 500 times each year to assist in performing this mission. These civilian volunteers fly more than 80% of all search hours flown by all agencies participating in searches, which are directed by the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center. If you take an average, it comes to three CAP aircraft airborne on Mercy Missions every hour of every day of the year. Although the Air Force reimburses Civil Air Patrol for some expenses on authorized missions, it does not pay them for the wear and tear on their aircraft, nor for the time away from their jobs or on any other personal expenses. I salute these volunteers who are doing so much to help my command live up to its motto, that others may live. You know, that was far out. Who's going to be able to far out? Now I know I want to learn to fly. A subject that touches the lives of all of us, and one that's especially interesting to young minds. Aerospace cuts across many other disciplines, such as management, meteorology, and communications. Black Bear 644, this is White Bear 124. Okay, Gerald, it's on a bearing of 120 degrees. Okay, 120. White right Bear 124, this is Black Bear 644. We're receiving a weak ELT signal on a bearing of 120 degrees. Request an immediate air search in grid 251 Alpha. Over. Roger. I read grid 251 Alpha. I'm about five miles south of you now, heading north. Out. The Civil Air Patrol is an auxiliary of the United States Air Force, but it functions as a separate entity. CAP is an all-volunteer civilian organization. Its members receive no pay. Under its congressional charter, the Civil Air Patrol has three distinctly different obligations. The mission that CAP is best known for is its role in providing emergency services in times of accident or disaster. CAP is also involved in a very active cadet program involving thousands of our youth nationwide. I hope you enjoyed that film about the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, Probably the least known activity of the Civil Air Patrol is its efforts in aerospace education, contributing in every way possible to educate the American public to the importance of aerospace in our lives. These are all important responsibilities and the Air Force is proud to share in them with the more than 60,000 citizens of the Civil Air Patrol. In the hearts and imaginations of the young, the wonder of flight finds a fertile field, like at this Air Youth Day. We're interested in seeing that young people get headed toward the future with some kind of purpose, not just sort of wandering into the future. I found that aerospace is one way I can get them interested. Somehow they can relate to aerospace. We do this on our own time. This is not some part of paid jobs. If the kids are excited about any part of it, and it leads them into a productive career where they're making a contribution to life rather than just taking from it, great. Aerospace education is usually a cooperative effort involving several agencies interested in keeping the public informed about aerospace activities. Civil Air Patrol works closely with NASA, the FAA, Air Force, airlines, and general aviation to promote better understanding of aerospace. Okay, we wanted to measure the hydrogen and helium 
ratio of the planet. This is to give us an idea of how the planet formed. It could be very, very similar to how the Earth was forming millions of years ago. At the adult level, an interested citizen wouldn't have to go too far or wait very long to find an aerospace workshop, a short-termer of one to three days or longer. In a typical summer of a typical year, there will be around 10,000 teachers attending three week-long workshops in aerospace education at about 180 colleges and universities. You'll find this guy not at all mythological. Credited at least they are teachers from the preschool up through the college level who are looking for something exciting, some way to excite their students in the classroom. The axe, the cartilage, pom bob. We try to have a social activity as soon as we can so we can get the teachers involved, acquainted with one another, so that they start to radiate some enthusiasm. And then they start communicating and help us to build a curriculum around what their desires are. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce the film that I'm about to show you. And then after the film, we'll have another session on the Federal Aviation Administration itself. But we, we usually bring in speakers from all of the different areas of aerospace. Give them some inkling of what goes on and why this is important. We give them classroom demonstrations and try to get them up into the air. We give them practical things that they can take back to their classrooms and really demonstrate simply so that students and all of us can understand what makes an airplane fly. And something about navigation, meteorology, how men hope to maintain themselves in space, and a look at man's future in space. After even one hour in one of our workshops, they're really turned on. And they, in turn, are able to go back to their classrooms and turn their students on. Distance has been traditionally measured in miles or kilometers. With the advent of air transportation, we think in terms of time. So, the United States is only about five hours wide from east to west, and three hours high from south to north. When you think of it that way, just how big is the United States? John? 15 square hours. Okay, John. The CAP develops curriculum material for aerospace education. These are well done, and I enjoy using them in my classroom. These materials are available from the CAP National Headquarters and are free or are inexpensive. Americans lived and walked on the moon because the American public wanted them there. All of the progress we have made in aerospace since the Wright brothers has happened because the American people have understood and supported it. To continue to develop this public understanding and support is an important civil air patrol mission. The cadet program provides young people with unlimited opportunities. In the weekly cadet meetings, there is an opening ceremony, cadet inspection, and a half hour of leadership training. After a break, there is a short period for reports, a discussion of aerospace current events, and instructions for planned activities. Cadet activities offer fun and friendship, new skills and knowledge, and a chance to do things most young people only wish that they could do. For example, many squadrons try to get new cadets into the air as soon as possible. In this way, they learn the feel of flying, an appreciation of aircraft they could get in no other way. Basically, that's what it's all about. The main activity at squadron meetings is a one hour long period devoted to special activities. These are different for each squadron depending on what interests that particular group of cadets and leaders. This is my country, Anne. I want to know which way America is. This all-girls squadron has a unique specialty that gets them invitations to perform for many different civic functions. Every fourth meeting of the month is devoted to a moral leadership discussion. In the charge of the Life Brigade, Tennyson wrote, Theirs is not to make reply. Theirs is not to reason why. 
theirs is to do and die. In the role of conscience to authority, Cadet Amano, what would you reply to this? Well, sir, in my interpretation, in the case of a military man, if he has faith in his country, then he will perform to the best of his ability. The range of special activities within squadrons is limited only by the imagination and initiative of its leaders. Cadets wear the basic Air Force uniform, decorated with their own insignia and designations of rank. Progress in rank is up to the initiative of each cadet who moves from one rank to another by completing achievements in leadership, aerospace education, physical fitness, and moral leadership. At the meeting this evening, it's my pleasure When a cadet has uh, earned the Billy Mitchell Award, named for the pioneer airman, General Billy Mitchell, he is eligible for Civil Air Patrol scholarships and more advanced national special cadet activities. If he should enlist in the Air Force, he automatically goes into the pay grade and rank of an E-2 upon completing basic training. Summer is a busy time for CAP cadets, as many apply for a wide range of special activities. A special board selects qualified cadets to participate in these activities. One of these is the survival course, sponsored by Air Force personnel at the Air Force Academy in Colorado. See, the type of thing we're trying to instill in you people is to be prepared. You know, have it in the back of your minds so that you know what you're going to do if it ever, ever does actually happen to you. That's why we have you doing all the different uh, post-ejection techniques, just to get them in the back of your mind. Practice it, and practice it, and practice it so that you know what you're going to do without even stopping to think about it. Each summer, Air Force bases all over the United States play host to CAP cadets for summer activities generally a one-week-long encampment. During their stay, cadets tour points of interest. The emphasis is upon new experiences, upon doing things. The program stresses exposure to the many facets and skills involved in aerospace technology. They learn about the Air Force, its structure, its elements, and its mission. They get a broad exposure to the Civil Air Patrol programs as practiced in other areas. In leadership training, cadets get a chance to exercise skills they have learned at the unit level, developing confidence. Leaders stress the importance of good health and physical condition through diet and exercise. Aerobics is the pattern for conditioning, and sports provides a fun way to keep fit. Elective activities allow cadets to participate in areas of special interest to each. Each year, a select group of about 200 Civil Air Patrol cadets go abroad. They travel to one of the overseas countries with whom we have joined in what is called the International Air Cadet Exchange Program. They visit historic sites, aerospace facilities, and sometimes live in the homes of families in the host country. We in the United States play host to young people from other countries, from groups similar to our CAP cadets. After an extensive tour of New York City, they travel to some other area of the United States where Civil Air Patrol families take them into their homes and into their hearts. Programs like this do much to foster better understanding between the young peoples of the world. They then return by way of Washington, D.C. for a tour of the Capitol, the Smithsonian Institute, and other places of interest before returning to their native lands. Uh, when I first walked into the uh, Smithsonian Institute, I first saw the, the plane the Wright brothers flew in, in 1903. It was almost like a mosquito, uh, and behind stood, stood the spirit of St. Louis, and it was covered with metal. Behind that, the lunar module. Oh, the, the difference there, you, you could not measure, and not only in know-how and technological advancement, but also in the mentality of man to reach so much further beyond uh, almost imagination. Besides these activities, cadets have many other opportunities to participate in special events all over the states. These include cadet officers' school, communications course, the FAA school in Oklahoma City, space flight in Huntsville, Alabama, the Air Training Command course, the Air Force Logistics Program, 
medical services orientation at Shepard Air Force Base, Texas, chaplain-sponsored conferences, and the National Cadet Competition, an annual event. The Civil Air Patrol annually administers more than 50 college or university scholarships and grants ranging from $500 to $1,500. Hi, I'm Peter Shaw. I'm a senior at Princeton University and will be receiving my degree this year from the Department of Astrophysical Sciences. As a Civil Air Patrol cadet, I received the Dr. Vanner von Braun Science Scholarship, and this has proved immensely helpful to me in financing my study here at Princeton. I've been interested in astronomy and the aerospace field since I was very young, and this interest led me to join the Civil Air Patrol Cadet Program while I was in high school. As a sophomore, I learned about the scholarship program from my unit commander, and I made an application to this program when I was a senior. The Civil Air Patrol Scholarship has been very helpful to me in furthering my interest in astrophysics, and it has been well worth the effort. My name is Deborah Lower, and I'm here at Wright State University. It was my good fortune to earn a four-year Civil Air Patrol scholarship. This scholarship enabled me to earn a dual major in mathematics and mathematics education. Through my eight years in the Civil Air Patrol, I was very fortunate to know many beautiful people, both younger and older than myself. My Civil Air Patrol activities on a local and national scale, my trip on IACE, and my spots award were clearly the building blocks of my young life. I am proud to have been a part of the Civil Air Patrol team. Members of the Civil Air Patrol are dedicated humanitarians. Who but dedicated humanitarians would spend hours of their own time donate airplanes, trucks, communications equipment, and other items, spend sometimes hundreds of dollars a year of their own money to help someone they never met before. Tower, one, two, four, this is Brown Bear 39er. Brown Bear 39er, this is White Bear 124. We read you. Go ahead. White Bear 124, this is Brown Bear 39er. We think we have a spotted. We know what kind of people it takes. What are the skills they need to carry on these humanitarian missions? Without a doubt, they need administrative volunteers. There is a great need for citizens who have radio equipment and the skill to operate them. The most experienced and qualified members usually get the responsibility of performing mission coordination which involves search mission planning, management of search pilots, observers, aircraft, and special equipment. And of course, you'll always find at every search base a number of cadets who have pitched in to help. The information officer is always busy with newsmen, members of the lost one's family, and others seeking information. Many of the senior members of CAP, the pilots, observers, radio operators, ground rescue team members, mountain climbers, First aid specialists and others are also cadet leaders. For every person in the sky searching, there must be about 17 volunteers on the ground. In order to qualify for these teams of specialists, the members must have taken training courses and served as apprentices until they become skilled. They know what they are doing. A case in point. Mike Diamond, a private pilot from Riverside, California, had departed from Monterey Airport on a solo cross-country flight. When Diamond's plane, a Cessna 150, was reported missing, an immediate air search was initiated by the Civil Air Patrol. A private pilot reported picking up a distress signal from an emergency locator transmitter in the San Rafael Wilderness area along the flight route filed by Mike Diamond. The Civil Air Patrol confirmed the transmission and ground rescue sprang into action. Diamond had encountered turbulent weather and had crashed into the side of a canyon. Rescue was not going to be easy, but dedication and know-how on the part of both the ground search party and helicopter crew 
would get him out. Although Diamond had broken both legs and arms in addition to his back, he survived his harrowing experience. If it wasn't for the Rail Patrol, I wouldn't be here today. CAP's 17,000 member-owned mobile and fixed radio stations permit its members to come into a disaster area and actually increase communications capability rather than to become an additional burden. Sometimes they are the only communications link. During Hurricane Agnes, CAP provided the only communications in some areas for many hours. These volunteers stayed on the job for 18 days. In the active Air Force, approximately 6% of each entering class at the Air Force Academy are former members of CAP. 7% of all Air Force officers have been in CAP, and 12% of all airmen have previous Civil Air Patrol experience. These civic-minded people range in rank from airman to general. James Williams is an Air Force Sergeant during the day, a Civil Air Patrol Squadron Commander during off-duty hours. We'd like you to meet a few more former CAP cadets. Astronaut Frank Borman, Doug Roach of the Thunderbird team, Charles de Bellevue, Air Force Ace, Jewel Widdefield, crew member of the record-breaking SR-71 flight. If the Air Force had to provide all of the services of the Civil Air Patrol, how much would it cost? How much to buy fleets of aircraft and spot them at the 2,000 airports CAP members use? How much to furnish regular maintenance? The man squadrons that are ready to go at all times on short notice. How much to set up the 17,000 radio contacts, the dedicated network of civilian volunteers? How much to equip and maintain the ground forces to back it up? The cost would be in millions per year the amount varying according to the way you figure it. These volunteers do it for nothing. This then is your Civil Air Patrol, the voluntary civilian auxiliary of the United States Air Force, trained for emergency service to the community. They strive to keep citizens of their community informed of the impact of aerospace on their daily lives. Many dedicate themselves to the task of developing tomorrow's leaders from today's youth. People just like you, people who care enough to give of their time and talents to help others.